What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Outlaw V2, man, coming at you for a Valentine's Day banger. Um, so before I get started, man, don't forget if you like my videos, don't forget to hit subscribe, turn on your notification bells. If you'd like to hit me up personally, you can always get on my uh, on my on my Instagram. My Instagram is Outlaw V2. I just recently changed it, and the the O in Outlaw is actually a zero because some punk out there decided he was gonna take my Instagram name that I wanted. So what are we going to talk about today? Today, man, I haven't touched on aromatase inhibitors in a long time. And I literally think aromatase inhibitors are probably one of the most uh, misunderstood uh, parts of doing a cycle or running a cycle. And being that it's misunderstood, it's also one of the most important things uh, about your cycle because having high estrogen or low estrogen can literally be um, a nightmare for, for most men. So let me first get started with just describing what aromatase inhibitors do for those that don't know. So aromatase inhibitors also shortened uh, the word AI is used a lot in the uh, bodybuilding forums. Um, and AI is an aromatase inhibitor. It basically is a drug designed for women. Uh, they use it to treat breast cancer uh, in women, but it's also used by bodybuilders to control estrogen. So your body is is basically kept in balance um, when you when so let's just let's just let's just start at the beginning when you're not taking any steroids your your testosterone over time will start to drop and as you get older your testosterone drops and your estrogen will increase this happens to all humans now when you start taking uh, exogenous uh, testosterone from any source whether that be uh, testosterone cypionate, whether that be sustenon or any aromatizing compound. Uh, you can find a list of aromatizing compounds pretty much anywhere. Um, the drugs all aromatize at a different rate. It also depends on how much dose of testosterone, exogenous testosterone you're taking. Your body tries to maintain balance. Uh, so when you, you take you take extra testosterone and your testosterone levels start to increase, your body uh, in reaction starts to increase your estrogen as a way to keep your body in balance. Everything inside your body is about balance. So an aromatase inhibitor taken during your cycle stops the aromatization of testosterone, of excess testosterone into estrogen because you don't want your estrogen either climbing high and you don't want your estrogen either, either going low. Typically the sweet spot for most, for most men is in between 20 to 30, I believe it's like nan nan nanograms per deciliter, like NG per DL is how it reads on blood tests. So let me let me just pause there. What I said is it's read on a blood test. So right off the bat, you should understand that you're going to need blood work to figure this out, uh, to figure out where you're going to be. So if you're not getting your bloods run during cycle, then you're basically just, you might as well just drive your car around with fucking blinders on because that's essentially the same thing the same thing you're doing if you're on cycle and you're not taking an AI or you're taking too much of an AI um, because you can either crash your estrogen or your estrogen can just go off the charts. So again, 20 to 30 NG per per deciliter is is the sweet spot for most men. Now, uh, once you start taking taking uh, exogenous testosterone, you you want to get a blood test to see to see where you're at. Usually most guys like to do that in about like in between like week four to six. That way the exogenous testosterone that you are taking has time to just build up to the, you know, to the proper levels in your body. This is one of the common mistakes that I see a lot of bodybuilders make. They'll jump on something like testosterone cypionate, which has about like a 12 to 12 to 14 day half-life. And then the first week of their cycle, they'll start jumping on a Rimadex and start taking, you know, uh, 0.5, uh, 0.5 of a, of a, of a gram of, <laughs> so basically 0.5 of a gram of a Rimadex. Generally it comes in, uh, in one gram pills. A Rimadex comes in. Yeah. Let me see. Anastrozole. Just making sure. Yeah. One gram. So you're taking 0.5 twice a week. That's usually what, you know, the standard for most men. Now, is, is, should that be the end all be all of, of how much aromatase inhibitor you should take? Certainly not, because it really depends on how much test you're running, what types of test you're running, um, how fast the compounds are going to aromatize in your system, and whether or not you have blood work. Because if you start taking 0.5 right off jump before your testosterone builds up in your system, you can easily crash your testosterone and be under 20 
NG per deciliter and and be be just as be just as bad. Um, honestly, crashing crashing your estrogen is probably is probably worse than having high estrogen. I've I've had I've had to go both ways. I've crashed my estrogen and I've also had my estrogen off the charts because I wasn't taking an AI or whatever. Now, typically, um, most men that are on a TRT program, like when I get on my TRT program, I do it without any AI and I have no issues. I have no loss of sex drive. I don't have um, I don't have any dick issues. Uh, I don't have erectile dysfunction. I don't have low libido or I'm tired all the time. Um, none of that. Low uh, bl high blood pressure uh, is 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 a is a symptom of high estrogen. Um, and the funny thing is, is that low estrogen and high estrogen carry a lot of the same side effects. So once you get outside that window of twenty to thirty, you really don't know which which way your estrogen went unless you get a blood test. Um, so the first thing you need to think about is how soon you're going to jump on your AI. And that is largely dependent on uh, what type of testosterone you're using. If you're using a test prop, something that has like a really fast half-life and it just rises in your system really quick, then by all means, I would I would probably jump on an AI um, as soon as you jump on cycle. Now, that's assuming that you're doing more than 250, uh, you know, 200 to 250 milligrams of test per week. Um, typically, if you're doing less than that, I think you can get away without using an AI. But again, there is no single dose that's going to work on every single person. Also, uh, if you are if you're adding compounds in later on in your cycle and you're dropping compounds, like some guys use uh, use like compound cycles where they run this for eight weeks and then they stop at week eight and then they add this new compound in and they drop something and they they some guys that like to do a bulking and then cutting they'll add Anivar in and then they'll drop D ball. That all is going to factor in and how much AI you're using. You can't continue to take, you know, half, point uh, five every, you know, every three days or or point five twice a week, if you're adding in uh, aromatiz aromatizing compounds and then removing aromatizing compounds. So one dose is not going to work for your entire cycle. So outside of blood work, some men uh, will just not run an AI until they start getting high estrogen, uh, high estrogen symptoms like you know. The, the, the one I hear all the time is, you know, if your nipples don't hurt, then you really don't need to take an, you know, an AI. I'm, I'm not on, I'm not on that, that plan. Typically what I do is on cycle, I get blood work done at about week five, week six, really depending on, on what, what it is that I'm doing. So first of all, let's, let me just discuss. I always talk about Arimidex because it's really the only, it's the only uh, aromatase inhibitor that I use. I tried Exemestane uh, a long time ago and I don't even know if it was real exemestane. This is this is back early in the early in the day, uh, early in the <laughs> early in the day, way back. You know when I when my my experience with gear was really limited. I tried exemestane, and then I figured out that Arimidex was more commercially available. I could get it. It's easier to dose, um, and that was it. So I just started using Arimidex. So that's pretty much all I'm going to speak on. Arimidex is probably the second most powerful AI. Um, it has a pretty good margin forever, but again, blood work, guys. You have to get blood work done. If you are serious about using gear, um, then you just need to pay the eighty to hundred dollars, or talk to your doctor, or whatever it is, and um, and get your blood work done because it's really the only way you're going to get a true picture of what your estrogen is doing. Now, when you start taking taking exogenous testosterone, again, I told you your body reacts by increasing your, your estrogen and you start taking your AI to basically fight that conversion from testosterone um, into estrogen. Now, once you start taking uh, your, your, your dosage, if, you're, if your cycle stays consistent, like for me, I'm running, right now I'm running 750 milligrams a week of Sustanon, and I've pretty much kept my, uh, my dosage at 0.5 Arimidex twice a week. And I've, I've been okay. Now, one thing I did start to notice is that my sex drive has kind of been just bouncing around. And at times, um, at times I really just, my libido is just, is just not there. And that's weird for me because especially, uh, if you're taking like, if you're taking trend, your libido should be like kind of like off the fucking chains. Um, so I can tell you right now, having low estrogen is probably more of a nightmare than having high estrogen. I mentioned that earlier. 
Um, some of the things about low estrogen man is just like depression, mood swings, irritability, low libido, low libido, your skin, your skin and lips are dry, just all kinds of issues with low libido. So that that just leads you in. If you're taking too much of an AI, you can do just as you can you can feel just as shitty as if you're not taking an AI at all and you're letting your estrogen just just blow blow through the ceiling. So <clears throat> Again, using a Remedex is, you just have to get red. So pretty much, uh, I'm gonna be getting some blood work done. Uh, week, f I think I'm right now, I'm in, I think I'm in week five. So, so probably by next week, I'm gonna have all my bloods done. I'm gonna see where I'm at uh, and just go from there. Um, now, again, if you're using a Remedex and you're using too low of an amount and your estrogen just goes off the, off the, you know, off the charts, then you need to adjust your dosage to kind of compensate so you can get in between that um, that 20 to 30. If you're on a, a low dosage of testosterone and you're using too much of Rimadex, you're gonna crash your estrogen and you're gonna feel just as shitty. So all the guys that hit me up in my DMs are having like, you know, dick problems or like, you know, um, I can't I can't get an erection or I, uh, I, I can't have an orgasm or my orgasms just aren't good. Um, all this, all those things are, are generally symptoms of either high or low estrogen. But because the symptoms are similar, you're really not going to know which way you go. Now, if you're not taking AI and you're having all these symptoms, I can pretty much guarantee you that your estrogen is off the charts. I had some guy hit me up the other day. He sent me his blood work and man, ah, his, his estrogen was literally in the I think it was like in the 400s or something like that. I'd have to go back and look, but I was literally like, holy shit, bro. Like, get yourself some Arimidex. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty much par for the course when, when you're using a cycle. When you're setting up your cycle, if you don't buy a Arimidex to go along with your cycle, then you're setting yourself up for failure. Uh, so, again... If your estrogen levels are, are are reading low, then you need to trim your dosage back. If you are running a compound cycle where you're adding in, in, in compounds and, and taking other compounds out, again, you need to adjust your aromatase inhibitor dosage to reflect that. Now, I use a Rimadex. People always wonder, like, you know, how do you how do you take half? The pills are so small. Just take your ass to Walmart and get yourself a pill cutter. It's very simple. The pills are small. It uses a little a little razor blade in there. You chop it in half and you take it. You can take one on like if you do Monday, Wednesday, Friday pins. You can take one on Tuesday and one on Friday. You can take one on Monday, one on Thursday. However you want to do it, as long as you're doing twice a week. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So I'll get my blood work done. I'll see if I'm in between 20 to 30. If I'm at 80 or 90, then I'll start taking maybe 0.5, uh, every two days. And that would put me at like, uh, 0.5, three times a week. And then I'll get bloods done again after about four weeks. Again, give your body time for, for number one, the drug to take effect. Uh, AIs are, are quicker. They have about a 30, they believe a 30 to 40 hour half-life. So AIs will be quicker to adjust your estrogen than injectable testosterone will with that has, uh, um, that has like longer esters on it. If you, if you use something like Cipionate, your blood levels are not going to stabilize until probably like week six, week seven anyway, which is generally why people do like 12 week cycles, 14 week cycles, 16 week cycles, because they're using something that has longer esters. Um, I mean, that's pretty much all I got on, on AIs for right now. But again, if you're not using AIs on any cycle dosage and you're not running bloods, then you're setting yourself up for, for just for failure. You're, you're going to feel like shit. You're going to be lethargic. You're going to have low energy. You're going to have low libido. So it just pays to invest in a good AI, get a good dosage, base it on blood work. Do not just wing it. Uh, don't just guess. Um, and that's pretty much all I got, man. So I hope today that, uh, I did a, give you guys a little bit of knowledge about aromatase inhibitors and how they should be used in cycle. And, uh, that's all I got, man. Holla at your boy.